Okay, here we go. We are in. Hi guys, uh, thanks very much for joining me. Sorry for the delay for those of you who've been waiting for a little bit. Uh, my name is Jackie M. For those of you who don't know who I am, you can find me at jackiem.com.au and I do a bunch of stuff. I produce a range of curry pastes and you can find them at shop jackiem.com.au I also teach people how to cook online through Zoom cooking sessions in my Malaysian Street Food Academy. If you're interested to find out more about it, make sure you drop me a comment, drop me a line, send me a message, however else, and I'll be sure to let you know when the enrollments start up again. But today I thought I might cover the topic on making homemade kaya, kaya which for those of you who don't know is a Malaysian coconut and pandan jam. Now I've made this in the past and I used to make it every week for my business because I used to actually sell roti canai spread with kaya as a breakfast offering at a number of different markets around Sydney. Uh, very very popular so I used to make kaya every week and uh, then now that my restaurant, my full-blown business has shut because uh, of my little child with Down syndrome Noah that I'm looking after now mostly full-time. Uh, what I tend to do is basically share my knowledge in other ways but also the topic of uh, making your own kaya comes up a lot okay and I'm just going to cover a few points about this. Now when I used to make kaya um, for my business, I used to have access to obviously commercial kitchen facilities and all that. So the way we would do things were a little bit different. And I'll talk about how we used to do it and how I subsequently did it. And then the uh, uh, introduction of the Thermomix in my kitchen, how I started to incorporate it and the results and also my tweaks around using the Thermomix to make Kaya. Okay. So again, thanks very much for joining me and make sure you say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Okay. Uh, and by the way, if you're watching this before, uh, obviously this is late July as we broadcast this, but this time, oh, by this time next week, I will just about be hopping on a plane with Paul and Noah to go to Malaysia. We're going to launch our Durian Cookbook. It's a collaborative cookbook um, by our Masters of Malaysian Cuisine chefs and we're going to launch it in KL. So if you're going to be in KL in August, uh, I would love for you to join our book launch. Okay, You'll get to mingle with our chefs. You're going to be um, served with an unlimited durian buffet, durian feast, and also you get a copy of our durian cookbook. You just got to get the tickets. The tickets don't go to me. The tickets go to the host of the event, which is D King in Bukit Bintang, their new premises. And um, you can find the link at dking.com.my my slash durian hyphen cookbook okay and get your tickets say hello when you uh see us there and we'd love to catch up with you okay now that we've got all that out of the way let's get back on to the whole topic of kaya okay i i did pre-record this session uh and i'm going to switch over my camera in a short little bit and again uh, the, the the focus of this session is uh, well i'm going to cover all bases put it that way but the focus on this session is the result you get from making kaya in the thermomix okay so for this particular exercise because i don't actually make kaya on a regular basis anymore i'm always stuffing around with it okay like i said i used to make it in my restaurant um the way we used to make it in my restaurant was we used to have what's called brat pans. I don't know if you're familiar with brat pans, B-R-A-T, which is uh, from a German word, braten, which is to, um, to, to, to fry, basically to grill sort of thing, right? And they're these big, giant, rectangular, um, deep trays, and we used to cook things in it with a shovel, okay? But one thing that I used to use my brat pans for was as steamers. So you can imagine a big rectangular tray, you can fill it up with 20 liters of water, and then you can uh, put like a lining on top of it, like trays and whatever, and then you cover the lid, and you bring the water to a boil, and it acts like a rectangular, wide, flat steamer. And that's how we used to make our kaya for my business, okay? So I used to make the kaya, like I said, to serve as a, a kaya and roti chanai. And also, I used to sell kaya in tubs for people who love having homemade kaya, right? So anyway, the way we used to make them was we used to use eggs, pandan, uh, you know, pandan extract of some form, whether you use the, the, the you know, the, the 
freshly squeezed pandan juice by blending pandan leaves which is basically any Malaysian cookbook anyone in Malaysia that's how they generally would make their uh, pandan extract right They'll because pandan leaves are a dime a dozen in Malaysia so they'll get lots of pandan leaves they'll blend them or they'll pound them and then with a little bit of water and then they'll extract uh, and sift the, uh, the the extract out of it okay now uh, if you want to cheat, you can use pandan coloring, which tends to actually produce an overpoweringly green color. And it's like a thick, gooey mixture, okay? If ever I used it, I would be very, very light-handed with it, right? Uh, and the third way would be pandan extract in a can, which you can buy here in Sydney. But you'll find that the pandan extract is very diluted, okay? So you have to use a lot to be able to get that nice green hue and also uh, when you use a lot of liquid in your kaya you might compromise on the texture of it okay so these are the three different uh, ways of using pandan in your kaya and one other thing I used to do for my kaya in the early days I stopped doing that after a while was actually something that I learned in one of my many many cookbooks uh, one method of doing it to produce a brown kaya was to actually withhold a couple of tablespoons of sugar from the sugar content of your kaya and then with that couple of tablespoons of sugar you will caramelize it on a stove top right you caramelize it till it's brown right and then you quickly pour over the cooked kaya and then you stir it in and it kind of like makes it a, produces a very intense flavor right so that's considered the pièce de résistance of like a kaya in a certain segment of Malaysian society which apparently are the nyonyas who do that I'm not sure I, I always thought it was Hainanese but apparently the nyonyas are the ones to do that okay maybe not all nyonyas nonetheless that's uh, all these different ways to produce kaya now the trick to making kaya like I said that's how we used to steam our kaya in these big giant like steamers essentially and it would take forever okay we would steam them and steam them and steam them we're talking about like three hours and you would check and we would actually place the kaya okay so what I would do I'll have egg I'll have sugar, I'll have pandan extract and I'll have coconut cream and then I would blitz it with a handheld blender till it's all kind of dissolved and then I would pour them into these clay pots right and then st stick the these clay pots, multiple clay pots covered with um, in the brat pan and then we'll steam them for a few hours okay and then after a few hours they will set like custard now that's a little bit different to how you would learn to make kaya if you're from Malaysia and all the cookbooks tell you you have to uh, produce like you know set up like a double boiling setup which is basically to have your kaya in a container inside a pot of boiling water right and then you're supposed to stand over your stove and stir it gently and you keep stirring it and stirring it and stirring it until the kaya produces like you know thickens up and produces the right texture and you're never allowed to let it boil so that's the traditional way of making kaya when i had my restaurant i short circuited that because we did not have time to be standing over a stove and stirring the kaya for hours okay remember this was our restaurant kitchen um and then when i quit my restaurant i hired a kitchen over in chatswood here in sydney and they had like these steamer ovens which are very very glamorous for us and what we would do is instead of steaming our kaya in a brat pan we would steam them in these vertical like open door ovens right you, we would make the kaya in the same pots and they would go into the oven and we'll shut it and we'll set it on the steamer function and steam them and then after i don't know like an hour or so or hour and a half we will take it out again use a stick blender and blitz it okay so that's how we would make our kaya when we transition from the restaurant to a commercial kitchen okay now uh before i continue any further i just want to mention what I, uh, my stepmom, who's of the old school way of making kaya, was always daunted about having to stand over a stove and stir the kaya in a pot in a double boiler, right? So I told her, no, 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 you don't have to do that. We just steam it in the restaurant. We just steam it for a couple of hours and it's done, right? So she tried it. And then the next time I saw her, 
I asked her how her kaya went, and she said, oh, it got ruined um, because after steaming, the kaya was set like a custard, so I threw out the whole thing, and I just freaked out. No, you don't throw it out. That's the whole point. It's meant to set, okay? And that's the first point I want to bring up with a lot of Malaysians who make kaya. They don't think the kaya should set, okay? But for the longest time when I was making kaya to sell in tubs and making kaya to sell as a spread on my roti chanai and I mean you can argue with me about the wisdom of serving uh, roti chanai with kaya but that's how we roll here in Australia that was my own iteration actually uh, long story behind that but anyway uh, yeah, I said that was a good point. It's meant to set and then you're meant to blend it in a blender or using a stick blender, okay? So she threw out a whole batch of kaya because she thought she messed up and she left it too long in the oven and it's set, okay? In, in the steamer and it's set, okay? So no, uh, it's meant to set and then you're meant to blitz it, okay? So uh, back to my story about the commercial kitchen that we hired what happened was that in the chaos of producing food in the commercial kitchen one day when we stuck the kaya in the oven right instead of turning it on the steamer function one of us accidentally turned it on the conventional oven function okay because these ovens are like dual function you can use them as a steamer or you can use them as an oven and it wasn't until halfway through, we don't know how long it'd been in there, that we said, like, oh my God, we set it on the wrong setting. It's, it's baking the kaya instead of steaming it, right? So it'd been in there for maybe 40, 45 minutes or something like that. We quickly switched it back to the steamer function and finished off that way. Took it out to see how it looked. And it was more set than how you would expect it to be. Usually a kaya is a little bit wobbly, like a soft custard, right? This time it was fairly set. Okay, we thought, let's see how it turns out if we, we blend it again using a stick blender. And you know what? It actually turned out as well, okay? So that's the whole idea of this aga aga kaya session. The fact that there are lots and lots of different ways to make kaya that you may not necessarily have thought of, okay? Now we're going to talk about, let me just quickly check because there's a warning here. The streams is the streams bit rate is low. Okay, I hope there's no interruption with the bit rate. But uh, yeah, thanks very much for tuning in anyway, guys. But anyway, so we're going to talk about the Thermomix. Like I said, these are like, we're talking like 10 years ago now. Okay, nowadays, I don't make kaya that often because every time I make it like, you know, Paul and I, we don't really eat bread at home, not because we... Yeah, we, we really save our kaya and kaya toast intake for when we go to Malaysia, okay? But at home, we don't eat bread as a matter of course, usually. So we don't have a lot of use for kaya. Okay, so uh, for those of you who own a Thermomix, right? Uh, those of you who own a Thermomix, you'll know there's a kaya recipe on the Cookie Do platform. I've shared with you guys a kaya recipe, which I have realized in this exercise, hence why I call it aga kaya, that it's not enough, okay? I said, uh, at first I said to cook it for 30 minutes in the Thermomix. So I used, before the Thermomix, I used to actually own a, a, comp a competing device, like a, a, a kind of like a Thermomix, like, um, you know, no brand version uh, and the settings are a little bit different but i actually created some recipes for them and i tried it out on this machine right and i said okay uh good enough to cook it for 45 minutes or whatever at 90 degrees and stuff right and then when i switch over the thermomix and you guys were asking for recipes for this and that and this and that I said, well it's kind of like a like for like you know it's one machine versus the other and i basically use the same settings that i used to use for that other machine for the thermomix and as it turned out i finally got around to using it I'm thinking nah that's not good enough okay first of all cookie do recipe okay this is the cookie do recipe that I made a couple of hours ago in my Thermomix okay for those of you who are subscribed to cookie do you will be able to find a kaya recipe in the Thermomix okay this is completely cooled down so let me just see if I can uh, pull would you mind just coming to help me out for a second <laughs> uh, can you give me a couple of spoons please oh, yeah, sure. sorry I thought you were yeah okay so this is the cookie do recipe okay and you know, and the other thing about my kaya as well i've actually shared my kaya recipe online a number of times and i have i'm always tweaking my own recipes okay maybe because my taste buds change maybe because of whatever else but at some point a few years ago i tried 
my own kaya recipe from my restaurant days and I was thinking you know this is pretty damn sweet you know maybe let's turn down on the sugar so I turned down on the sugar uh, this is not my uh, so my new recipe has less sugar in it this is the uh, the cookie dough recipe that has more sugar than my current recipe okay and this is what it looks like now it's not bad right uh, one thing I want to point out is that uh, kaya does uh, thicken up after it cools down okay so this is cooled down completely now so I don't know how you feel about the texture here okay is um, it to me it's slightly runny okay uh, but this is the texture of the kaya in the cookie dough and the way you make it is eggs sugar coconut cream and they have the whole long process of pandan leaves and blitzing them and extracting them. I skipped all that, okay? So instead of using pandan juice, I actually use pandan powder, okay? So remember earlier I mentioned that you can use uh, fresh pandan leaves or frozen pandan leaves and you blitz them and extract the, 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 the juice, okay? It's a little bit tedious, frankly. Um, secondly, you can use the pandan like concentrate, which can be a little bit artificial, all right? And thirdly, you can use pandan extract out of a can. This fourth option is actually pandan powder, which was supplied to me by mybluetea.com.au. Okay, my blue tea specializes in all these uh, uh, kind of like powdered forms of, um, you know, different types of Malaysian uh, stuff like pandan and, and blue pea flower and all that right and it's completely natural okay so I use that I actually use a tablespoon or about half a tablespoon in this instance of pandan powder so it didn't have the 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 extra liquid that you would get from using pandan extract remember how I said if you use like a very diluted form of pandan extract right you might have to use more and then or whatever else okay and then this would be less less thick okay so using pandan powder I think produces a pretty decent result here so this is pretty decent this is the cookie dough official recipe right my own cookie dough recipe uses less sugar um, but like I said, the cooking time is wrong, okay? Because I tried it myself and I realized that that was the case and I'm gonna tell you how I adapted it. Um, okay, so back to um, my exercise of the aga aga kaya, right? Um, what I did, I have an oven here now in my domestic kitchen that also does steaming, okay? I did not use the steaming function this time. Maybe I should have, okay? So I was experimenting yesterday on different ways to make kaya so what i did i started out by sticking all the ingredients in a thermal mix you don't need a thermal mix you can just use a blender basically chucked in like three eggs uh, sugar coconut cream and i used actually a tablespoon of the pandan powder didn't measure anything right um, and then i blitzed it and then i poured it into a tray and then i booked it uh, just let me pass this on to Call. Sorry, <laughs> I've just hung it up. I don't know if we'll call again. Maybe you can call them back and find out. I don't know. I don't know who it is. Uh, actually, you know what? It might be Peter Warren because <laughs> it says it's Liverpool. Um, yeah. So anyway, if uh, what what I did was I blitzed everything and then I chucked it into a, a, a basically a container and I baked it. Okay. Remember how I told you we accidentally discovered that baking your kaya, kaya does not actually ruin your kaya. So yesterday I decided to bake it and with no context as to how hot the oven should be and how long I should bake it for, I decided to chuck it into my oven at 150 degrees Celsius for 45, 50 minutes, okay? And then I took it out and I realized it was too long, okay? Uh, back in my restaurant days, remember, I used to make them in big like quantities, you know, in like, uh, quantities of like I don't know 20 or 30 eggs per batch right this time I only did it in a batch of like three or six eggs or something like that so it's a very small volume um, and I baked it for 45 minutes it turned out to be too too long and this is what it looked like okay so this was it out of the oven you see the, the the slightly burnt bit on top I didn't even bother covering it okay back in my restaurant days when I, I when I steamed or in that instance baked the kaya 
I would actually cover the top with foil, right? This one, I didn't even do that. I just chucked it straight into the oven and baked it for 45 minutes, took it out. This was what it looked like, okay? Let's play it. So I decided I was going to use a stick blender and blend it, okay? Now, to cut a long story short, you see how it's turning out when I blend it. You see how... Um, how reduced it is, okay? Usually kaya should be a little bit more um, gooey, okay? This was a little bit over reduced, okay? This was what it looked like after blending it for about, I don't know, about a minute or so, okay? I wasn't going to get it any smoother than that. So what I did was I chucked it in a Thermomix, okay? So you see, this is how it looks like. This is how it looks, okay? And then the brown bits are all blitzed, so you can't actually see that anymore. Then I chucked it into the Thermomix and blitzed it. And I'm going to tell you how long, because I, like I said, I do everything aga aga. I don't kind of like have everything set exactly how many seconds, exactly what, te uh, you know, what speed and what temperature and whatever, okay? Here we go. So Thermomix, all the ingredients go into Thermomix. You blend it. Uh, in the oven for 150 degrees at 45 minutes and then thermal mix for 60 seconds at speed 10 and this was what it looked like okay now this is the second batch okay we went to cut a little bit too close this is my recipe in the thermal mix which was to chuck all the ingredients and then cook it in the thermal mix uh, I extended it because I knew that the 45 minutes I put down before was not long enough. I extended it to 90 minutes, okay? In the ni 19, 90 minutes in the thermal mix, let it stir it for you at speed 2 at 90 degrees. I should have increased it further, but for whatever reason, I decided to stick with 90 degrees. And that was how gooey it was. Then, what I did was, because it was pretty gooey, I then chuck this into the oven, okay? I poured it into a glass bowl and chuck that into the oven for 30 minutes at 140 degrees, a bit less than 150 that I did for the first batch, right? And this was what it looked like. You can see that part of it was set, but the inside wasn't quite set, right? So, because it's a bit lumpy, and I kind of like messed up a little bit. <laughs> Paul didn't cut that out. It's a bit embarrassing, but it was very, very hot. So I just basically tipped the ball back into the thermal mix to blitz it, right? And of course, again, with this, you don't actually need the thermal mix to blitz or whatever. You can use the stick blender and whatever else. And then I blitzed it. And this was what it looked like, okay? And also, by the way, my recipe had another problem with it because I forgot to mention to leave the measuring cup off, okay? Because the measuring cup was on the lid, it meant that all the steam was trapped inside the bowl and was falling back into it. So it wasn't able to reduce as much as I would have liked for it to do so. So after 90 minutes of... Um, cooking in the thermal mix with the lid on, I took off the lid and cooked it a little bit further, I think for another 30 minutes or something like that, okay? And this was what I got. And then I chucked it in, like I said, in the oven for 30 minutes, and this was what I got. This was still hot, so it was still quite gooey, right? And I'm going to show you side-by-side -side comparison of the baked kaya okay so you get it blend all the ingredients the thermomix or blender cook in the thermomix at 90 degrees for 90 minutes then cook in the oven and then blend it and this was what I got okay this is by the way not the be all and end all I just wanted to show you the result of my experiments and you can tweak it yourself or otherwise I will actually provide the instructions with my tweaked versions now that I've figured out what we can do to make this work, right? Okay, so on the left was the baked kaya and on the right was the thermomix kaya. And what I ended up doing was that I actually combined the two. 
Okay, I combined the because you, you notice with the blended uh, with the baked kaya, it was very very reduced. Okay, whereas with the thermomix kaya, it was very very quite runny in my opinion. Okay, it will prob it would probably have set a bit more had I let it cool down completely, right? But at that point, I thought, well, oh, this is a bit runny, and this one is really quite thick. Let's combine the two of them, chuck them into the thermomix, and blend it together. And this was what I got. Okay, so this, remember I made this yesterday, okay, so you see the texture, okay, and obviously there's still room for improvement, but this is very delicious, it's usable, okay, and then just before we went live, I did this on based on the official cookie dough recipe, you see the texture is smooth, but it's gooey, okay, this one is a bit firmer. So Kaya texture is a little bit subjective, right? It depends on what you want to use it for. I probably personally prefer it to be slightly thicker, okay? Closer to this particular texture, okay? Whereas this one is very, very soft, okay? But remember, um, I mentioned about baking your Kaya. So obviously, my first attempt at baking it in my domestic oven I got I got carried away. I left it in too long. I could probably have baked it for a uh, at a lower temperature for a shorter period, right? And I would have produced the same result, okay? In my opinion, or I could have just let it cook in the thermal mix and let it do the stirring for you. This took like an hour and a half with the lid off at ninety eight degrees, okay? And now that it's completely cooled down. What do you think of the texture? And I know there are other ways to make kaya, right? I know there are people who say to add more egg yolks in this so because egg yolks are more concentrated than egg white to produce a thicker consistency. But I personally do not like kaya that tastes too eggy. I don't know about you. It's a personal preference thing. So I, I'm very loath to do that. And then there are other ways. And I, I know uh, years ago, uh, a famous chef here in Sydney, uh, Uncle Jim um, from Jim's Malaysia, mentioned that you can make a five minute kaya, and that again is by using just egg yolk. I've never tried it myself, but again, in my mind, uh, if you're only using egg yolk, to me it might be a little bit uh, too egg yolky for my personal preference, okay? Uh, that's basically what I wanted to cover for you guys. Uh, the whole idea of like standing over a stove and stirring a pot of kaya in a double boiler for hours to retain to get the consistency you want is very tedious, and a lot of people think that's the only way to make it. The other way to make it is in the thermal mix. In my mind, if you, I mean, obviously with the thermal mix, you can let it this go for another hour and a half, and it will thicken up, right? So. You're not standing over your Thermomix and stirring it. You can let it do its thing, but it does take a while for it to thicken up. Okay, this is after one uh, 90 minutes of stirring, okay, at 98 degrees. Whereas to me, the shortcut way of baking it in the oven and then blitzing it in the Thermomix or with a stick blender, to me, it's kind of like the quick shortcut way to do it, okay? And like I said, I've stuffed around with sugar amounts because my palate has changed over the years and I've stuffed around with using uh, pandan powder with like pandan extract and all kinds of stuff as well. They all work. I've stuffed around with heating up a couple of spoons of sugar till it caramelizes and then pouring it into uh, pre-made kaya and stirring it through. Uh, all kinds of different ways to make kaya and all of them actually work okay so don't be too intimidated about making your own kaya give it a go if you do want to bake it in the oven like i said bake it at a lower temperature okay 140 150 might have been pushing it okay as you saw what happened but maybe if i had covered it with foil or something else it might have turned out better, okay? Right here, I hope you found this useful. And don't forget, uh, our Durian Cookbook launch event is on the 11th of August. Get your tickets before it's too late. Very limited spots available. Secondly, uh, don't forget, if you're interested to learn more Malaysian cooking for me, uh, I provide like very comprehensive notes and all that kind of stuff, even questionnaires and all that to make sure that you retain the information that's covered in all these topics around Malaysian cooking, Malaysian dishes and all the different hacks that I've encountered over my years of like 
cooking Malaysian food for a living. Uh, I hope you do join me. Make sure you drop me a line and you can just uh, join my email subscriber list and I will notify everyone once the doors reopen for new enrollments. Okay, I'll see you next time. Thanks guys.